Oh, hi, I'm Danny Karen, your lovable lawyer, on campus today with your university shot of vaccination wellness. Now, I'm going to talk a bit today about what happened at Indiana University. It's basically happening in real time. It's my alma mater, actually. I went there, so it means a lot to me, and I'm going to share with you what's going on. Now, just for fall semester, they're requiring mandatory vaccinations. Now, you might be wondering if you saw my video of maybe a week and a half ago, why I'm talking about va uh, mandatory vaccinations again when I talked about it then. Well, a lot has happened since then. And you all deserve to know, especially with back to school season upon us and people going back to school all around the country. So let's go back to what I taped maybe, like I said, about a week and a half ago. I thought it was important to let folks know that it is not unconstitutional for states to require vaccinations. I talked about statewide vaccination mandates, not so much campus vaccinations, but just the same since campuses, public universities that is, are an extension of the state, same principle. And what I explained in my video was under the U.S. Supreme Court case, Jacobson versus Massachusetts back in 1905, states can require compulsory vaccinations. So we're going to talk about that as it affected Indiana University, but let's talk a bit about Jacobson first so you all know what happened there. That was a case back in, like I said, 1905, where the state of Massachusetts was dealing with a smallpox epidemic, and they required vaccinations subject to criminal fine if you didn't get one in the city of Cambridge. Well, Jacobson didn't like it. He went to court, went all the way up to the U.S. Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court basically said, in not so many words, hey, you know what? You do not have a constitutional right to make your neighbor sick. And with that, it was basically decided and ruled upon and decreed as the law of the land that states indeed have the right to require compulsory vaccinations. Fine. Let's fast forward to 2021 and what the heck happened at IU. Well, Indiana, a public school, my public school, decided they were going to require vaccinations of all their incoming students for the fall semester 2021. Eight students didn't like it. They went to court. They filed in the U.S. District Court for the Southern, the uh, rather Northern District of Indiana, what's called a request for a preliminary injunction, which is a request of the court to make Indiana stop with the uh, compulsory vaccinations until the case litigated its way through court. The district court judge there said, no way, Indiana can move forward. Well, the students didn't like it. So what do they do? They appeal to the next level up, which if you're appealing from an Indiana ruling is the U.S. District Court for the Southern, I'm sorry, for, it's the uh, U.S. Court of Appeals for the Seventh Circuit out of Chicago. Sorry about that, out of Chicago. And the interesting thing was when I taped my video about two weeks ago, the Seventh Circuit hadn't ruled yet. And I channeled all my remarks through Jacobson versus Massachusetts. Well, what did the Seventh Circuit do when it ruled about two days after my video? It too channeled its decision through Jacobson versus Massachusetts and said, hey, listen, it was legal back in 1905 to require vaccinations. It's legal in 2021 for IU to require them too. We're not going to put off this rule, this requirement at IU for its 90,000 students and 40,000 faculty. Now, what Judge Easterbrook for the Seventh Circuit said for a three judge panel, and he's probably one of, if not the most highly respected circuit court or appellate court judges in the country. He said, you know what, this vaccination um, requirement in Indiana is, is structured even better than the one back in Cambridge in 2000, or sorry, in 1905 for a couple reasons. One, they, uh, the, the uh, mandate provides exemptions for medical and religious reasons. That wasn't going on in 1905, believe me. Second, what he said is that, hey, listen, it doesn't apply to everybody in the state. It only applies to IU students, which means if you don't want to get vaccinated and you're in Indiana, go to another school. There are plenty of other opportunities for you. Just don't go to IU. And that provision wasn't baked into the 1905 decision in Jacobson. It was much more rigid. So there are a lot of accommodations that Indiana built into this rule so as to make it not unconstitutional. And Judge Easterbrook said as much. Not to be outdone, what the students do next? They petitioned to the U.S. Supreme Court. And the U.S. Supreme Court, they asked for um, an emergency ruling to hold off on this rule. And Judge Amy Coney Barrett, the newest justice, she didn't wait for a response from the state of Indiana. She didn't even ask for the whole court to vote. She instead, in a, in a one-line ruling, denied the application of the students to put off the, um, um, the compulsory vaccination requirement. 
said so basically not happening here. Indiana can require vaccines. So for, first thing is it's good to know that I got it right a couple weeks ago when I did my video. It was constitutional then. It's even more, if you'd ask me, constitutional now because Indiana was the first test, it was the first case to test whether colleges can require vaccinations, um, public colleges that is, and the court unequivocally said in a manner of speaking yes. Didn't say yes, it just didn't reverse the Seventh Circuit, which is functionally yes. So what does that mean? Does it mean that all students uh, at all public universities are going to be required to get vaccinated? Oh, heck no. I'm here in Ohio. Ohio State isn't com uh, compelling vaccin vaccinations. Why? Because the politics here don't lend itself to that as they don't lend itself in lots of states. You're not going to see it because there are a lot of timid legislatures out there who aren't going to go that far. Heck, they weren't requiring mask mandates. They're certainly not going to require vaccination mandates. Doesn't mean they can't. Just means, in my estimation, they won't despite the Indiana University ruling. So what's our takeaway? What's that mean for us? What I think it means is we can't count on the states to do what's right to protect us and save us and to put down this pandemic. We instead have to tell our friends and neighbors, get vaccinated. Have our friends and neighbors tell their friends and neighbors, get vaccinated. Why? Because it's essential to preserving humankind and maintaining a safe society. That's something we all have to do and we owe it to each other to do. I hope we'll all do it and I hope we'll get to that good, safe place eventually. And that is today's on-campus vaccination, vaccination shot of legal wellness for you. I hope it helps round out this story, this theme, this, um, this important message from the other week channeled through a current modern just one week ago event as it concerns Indiana University and what's happening there and could maybe happen elsewhere. And I will keep putting out videos for you to keep you safe and well. If you want to learn more, please subscribe to my um, internet page, my web page, on my YouTube channel, I'm on Facebook, Twitter, uh, Instagram, even LinkedIn. And I'll keep doing my part and you do yours and stay safe and well out there, folks. Thanks a lot.